Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Corel Painter Color Guide PDF, which is available for sale on gumroad.com slash Aaron Rutten. So this is an eight page PDF that you can download. I have it priced at 99 cents, but you can pay whatever you want. If you wanna help support my channel and help support videos like this for free on YouTube, donate a couple of dollars, $5, $10, whatever you want, whatever you feel that this PDF is worth. So what this PDF is going to show you is how to intelligently pick color in Corel Painter. And to do that, you need to be able to understand how color works in Corel Painter. In Corel Painter, you have a color triangle with a ring around it. And hue is the outer ring, which represents the pure color. That would be yellow or red or blue or green. The saturation controls how intense the color is. Is it really vibrant or is it really dull and muted? And then finally, V stands for value, which is the lightness or the darkness of the color. You might also hear value referred to as tone. So that's the cover page. That's kind of an introduction to the properties of color in Curl Painter. And on the next page, we'll look at the hue ring in more detail. The hue ring contains all of the colors in the visible spectrum. Each color is equally distributed on a ring. Colors that are opposite to each other on the ring are complementary to one another. For example, yellow is complementary to blue. There are many different color harmony rules that you can choose from. Examples can be found at color.adobe.com. So you can see on this little diagram, the dashed lines are connecting complementary colors. So blue is complementary to yellow, red is complementary to cyan, and magenta is complementary to green, and so on. Moving on to the next page, we can take a look at the difference between additive and subtractive color models. Computer color is made by mixing red, green, and blue light. This is known as RGB. When combined in equal amounts, the result is white light. This is known as additive color. Traditional media, such as paint, uses a different model called subtractive color. Subtractive color is based on the absorption of light. Green paint appears green because every color except green has been absorbed by the paint molecules. In subtractive color, cyan, magenta, and yellow combine to create black. This is known as CMYK. So for example, the printer that you use at home uses cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. K stands for black. The next page talks about hue, value, and temperature. Hue is pure color. When value like white or black is added, hues become shades of color. Pure hue has a value of 128 when saturation is at its maximum. Despite being identical in value, each hue can appear relatively lighter or darker when compared to one another. For example, yellow is much lighter than blue, yet both colors are the same value. Hues can also be divided by temperature. Red, yellow, and orange are warm hues. Blue, green, and purple are cool hues. So you can see on this chart, there's these different regions of this little pie here. There's a light region and a dark region. There's a warm region and a cool region. The following page talks about hue shift. In real life, hue shift occurs naturally and transitions between colors. For example, the center of the sun can appear yellow, while the outer edges may appear to gradually shift towards orange. Shift the hue towards a lighter, warmer hue when choosing highlights. Shift towards a darker, cooler hue when choosing shadows. This will make your color transitions look more natural. So in this example here, you can see that orange is the target color up in the top left. And if I wanted to make that color cooler, I would shift it towards red. If I wanted to make that color warmer, I would shift it towards yellow. In the bottom right example, I have this blue color. And if I wanted to make that cooler, I'd shift it towards indigo. If I wanted to be warmer, I'd shift it towards cyan. Moving on to the next page, we can talk about the color triangle anatomy. The color triangle represents the value and saturation of a color. Value is white, black, and every single shade of gray in between. Value follows a vertical axis along the left side of the triangle. Light colors are located near the top left of the triangle. Dark colors are bottom left, and midtones are in between. Saturation is the intensity of a color. Saturation follows a horizontal axis from left to right. Fully saturated colors are pure hue. Colors with less saturation appear muted or pastel. The following page will show you where to find shadows and highlights. Typically, highlights are more vibrant than shadows because highlights are created by an abundance of light, whereas shadows are created by an absence of light. When choosing colors for your artwork, it's often best to add saturation to highlights and reduce saturation for shadows. There may be cases where you want dull highlights and vibrant shadows, so remember, this is just a general rule for choosing shades of color. Next, we'll talk about the saturation curve. To make an object appear three-dimensional, one must choose the correct combinations of saturation and value during the shading process. When combining saturation with value, it's best to follow the saturation curve. A deep saturation curve starts at black and follows the bottom edge of the triangle until it reaches 100% saturation. Next, it hugs the top side of the triangle and moves toward white. A shallow curve starts at black, 
falls short of 100% saturation, and swings back towards white. Follow these saturation curves to help your shading look more natural. And the final page discusses color value regions. This diagram combines the previous three examples to show the different categories of color that can be created by combining saturation with value. Use this diagram to assist you when choosing color and try to memorize the different regions. So you can kind of browse around this chart. If you wanted a desaturated highlight, you can find that in the top left. If you wanted an intense highlight, you could find that towards the right end of the triangle, and so on. So there you go, that's a walkthrough of my Corel Painter Color Guide PDF. Again, if you're interested in downloading this, you can get it from gumroad.com slash Aaron Rutten. And if you scroll down, you'll see some other information that might be helpful. The size of this document is 1.14 megabytes. It's in PDF format, which can be read with just about any PDF reader on your phone or your tablet or your computer. The dimensions are US letter paper size, which is 8.5 by 11. That's a standard printer paper size. It's compatible with all versions of Corel Painter and it can be printed. So you could just open this and print it if you'd rather have it printed out. It's pretty easy to buy. You can just put in the price that you wanna pay here, click on buy this, enter your credit card information number, or you can pay with PayPal. Then you'll wanna look in your email. That would be the email address that you used when you purchased the PDF. And then you'll be able to click on download. And then you'll have an option to save the file to your computer. You can also read it in your browser. There's another download button here, or you can open it in the Gumroad app on your phone or your tablet. And at any time, if you need to get that PDF back, you can always go to that download link in your email. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.